Okay, so a quick show of hands. How many of you have ever heard of this dashing American astronaut Frank Rubio and what his claim to fame is? Well, I'm going to tell you, and it ties into Butch and Sundance and this whole Starliner mess. And I'm going to tell you next on Maximus. You are watching Maximus Aviation. So while the world is busy peppering NASA and Boeing about why their broke-back spaceship, the Starliner, failed, and who's to blame for one of the most significant blunders in the history of manned spaceflight, most of the media are missing the biggest part of this story, and that is the manned part of manned spaceflight in this whole Starliner debacle. But do you know who still remembers that part of the story? Well, you and I do, of course, because we here on the channel have been concerned about astronauts Bush and Sonny, or as I affectionately refer to these interstellar sojourners as Bush and Sundance, since this whole mess began. However, now news is leaking out of NASA that Bush and Sonny, and especially Sonny, are suffering some potentially serious health concerns as they near three months into their original eight-day space mission. And we'll get into the health of Bush and Sonny in a minute. But first, you need to know that by no means is two or three months a record-setting time for astronauts in space. Not even close. However, in most cases, these were planned missions where astronauts trained for up to two years to prepare for their long stay in space. And usually, these long missions were explicitly intended to study exactly how the human body responds to long durations in space. And usually, none of these side effects are particularly pleasant. However, like I said, these astronauts had years to prepare themselves mentally and physically for this voluntary space torture. But did you know that the record for the longest single mission in space belongs to a Russian cosmonaut? Because of course it does. And that record belongs to the now 80-year-old retired former cosmonaut Valery Polyakov. Polyakov, a cosmonaut since 1972, spent 437 days aboard the Soviet space station Mir, conducting experiments and performing scientific research. On January 9, 1995, after 366 days in space, Polyakov formally broke the space flight duration record previously set by Vladimir Titov and Musa Marinov six years earlier. He returned to Earth on 22 March 1995. But not only did he set a record, but being the Russian badass that he was, when the Soyuz capsule came back to Earth, Polyakov opted not to be carried the usual way the few feet between the Soyuz capsule and a nearby lawn chair. Instead, he walked under his own power to prove that humans could be physically capable of spending long periods in space without feeling much effect. But of course, Polyakov volunteered for his 430-day flight to learn how the human body would respond to the microgravity environment of long-duration missions to Mars, and he vigorously prepared for the mission. And according to Russia's official statement, other than being in a cranky mood, Polyakov's body responded fine. But take that for what it's worth, because NASA has known for a long time that long-term space duration does have some serious effects on the human body. But hey, he still set the record, so there's that. Okay, be honest, who googled Frank Rubio between the intro and now? That's okay, I would have done the same thing. But here's the story about Frank Rubio. So if you never heard of Frank Rubio, don't feel bad because neither have I. But I should have, because Miami native astronaut and flight surgeon Frank Rubio recently set the record for the longest time a U.S. astronaut ever spent in space after 371 days at the ISS as a U.S. astronaut on the Russian Soyuz mission MS-22 in 2022, returning 371 days later over a year on the MS-34 mission in September of 2023, landing in a Soyuz capsule in Kazakhstan. He scored the record on September 11, 2023, when he surpassed NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei's previous record of 355 days for the then-longest space flight by an American astronaut. However, this is where I'm going to wrap Frank Rubio, Butch, and Sonny into a nice, neat Starliner-related bow. Because Frank Rubio never planned to spend or set a record. He was scheduled to only spend six months at the ISS. But guess why he had to stay there another six months? 
Well, while Frank was at the ISS, the Soyuz capsule he arrived on sprung a coolant leak, and they had to jettison the capsule from the ISS. And it wasn't until over six months later than planned that Frank could get back home on another Soyuz capsule. So you see how I tied all that together. Nice, right? But since we haven't been able to hear from Bush and Sonny yet, lucky for us, Frank Rubio can shed some light on how Bush and Sonny may be feeling right about now. After his record-setting space flight, Frank said it's been a mixed emotional roller coaster to a certain degree, because personally it was an incredible challenge and it was difficult. Rubio said when faced with the challenges of the mission, he tried to stay positive, relax, and communicate with loved ones back home. But, and this is the most important thing to keep in mind when thinking about Bush and Sonny, Frank said that if he had known before the launch that the mission would last a year, he said he would have refused it because it would have been too much time away from his wife and four children. And I'm sure if we could ask Bush and Sonny right now the same question, they would likely have the same answer. But Frank, of course, being a former Navy pilot and colonel having the right stuff, said professionally it was incredibly rewarding. It's a huge honor and it's a privilege to represent our office and our team this way. So now, as I said, the Starliner crew, specifically Sonny Williams, are starting to show some potentially serious health issues related to their time in space. New reports have stated that astronaut Sonny Williams, 58, is experiencing eyesight issues on the ISS, a condition that results from prolonged exposure to microgravity. Her condition is known as spaceflight associated neuroocular syndrome, or SANS, which affects the fluid distribution in the body, leading to issues with vision, among other things. This condition causes blurry vision and can also change the structure of the eye. Scans of Williams' retina, cornea, and lens have been conducted to gauge her eye health, and she recently underwent comprehensive eye examinations along with her other crew members. These scans focused on capturing detailed images of the cornea, lens, and optic nerve to better understand the potential effects of long-duration spaceflight on human vision. According to eye specialists, these tests are crucial for several reasons. Primarily, they help monitor vision and detect any changes or issues that could arise due to the unique environment of space. Regular eye checkups ensure that any problems are identified and managed promptly, maintaining the astronaut's health and their ability to perform mission-critical tasks effectively. One of the most common conditions, as I just mentioned, is SANS. This condition includes symptoms such as changes in vision, optic disc edema, which is swelling of the optic nerve, globe flattening, a change in the shape of the eye, and coronal folds or wrinkling in the vascular layer behind the retina. The primary causes of these issues is believed to be fluid shifts that occur in the body in microgravity. On Earth, gravity pulls fluids to the lower part of the body. In space, however, these fluids tend to move upwards towards the head, leading to increased pressure on the brain and the eyes. This increased intracranial pressure can affect the shape and function of the eyes, leading to the symptoms associated with SANS. Additionally, Butch and Sundance underwent a standard hearing test. Astronauts in space undergo various regular checkups to understand the impact of microgravity on the human body and also to keep a check on their health status. Additionally, Butch and Sonny, as well as the other NASA astronauts, also took turns imaging each other's neck, shoulder, and leg veins as doctors on the ground monitored the process in real time. As for the hearing tests, astronauts are at risk of hearing loss or vision impairment during their long-term time in space. NASA said in the past that many astronauts who have returned to Earth after long stays aboard the space station reported a subjective change in their eyesight. Additionally, other long-term effects, Butch and Sonny, as well as the six other crew members presently on board the ISS can expect, bone demineralization, which occurs when microgravity can cause a negative calcium balance, which can lead to bone loss, muscle atrophy, when astronauts are in space, their legs and back don't work as much, which can cause their muscles to weaken or atrophy. This could lead to injuries during exploration missions. Something called brain shifts is another condition that can occur on longer missions of microgravity that can cause greater cortical crowding at the top of the brain. 
Then there's something called intestinal microecology disorder, where microgravity can cause an imbalance of beneficial and harmful bacteria in the intestines, which can affect digestion and absorption. Then there's psychological stress, isolation, and confinement. That's another problem that can cause sleep disturbances, circadian rhythm disruptions, and emotional and behavioral difficulties. Other long-term effects of spaceflight include radiation carcinogenesis. Space radiation can increase the risk of cancer, cataracts, and sterility. And some of these effects can even be passed on to their descendants through mutated genes. And then there are what's called fluid shifts. Microgravity can cause fluid shifts and decreased plasma volume. So it's really time for NASA and Boeing to get off their collective asses and get our elderly astro boomers back home where they belong. Like I said, it's one thing for younger astronauts to spend years preparing for long missions, but when you haven't prepared your body, soul, and mind, there's no telling how your system will react. So how about that? Not only am I a YouTube clown, but I also play a doctor on TV too. Yeah, but you probably gotta be my age to even understand that reference. Anyway, there you go. Once again, you're all caught up on the wild and crazy adventures of Bush and Sundance and their broke back steed, the Starliner. In closing, Godspeed, Butch, Sonny, and all our men and women in space. Well, that's gonna do it for now. But before you go, don't forget, you gotta let me know down below. And as always, thanks for stopping by and watching the channel. And until next time, as always, yeah. This is Maximus.